Welcome back to the Art Lab. Today, we're gonna to be doing something kind of fun and different. Our lesson for today is oil painting. Now, I've had a lot of time at home over our quarantine, that is our time away from school, and I've started a couple paintings that I haven't finished, so I'd like to show them to you now. Here's one that's a self-portrait of Mr. D. You can tell it's not quite finished. I'm missing my right eye, my shirt's not done. I need lots of detail in my hair. Plus I haven't painted the sides, which is something I need to do. I also have this painting. And when this painting is done, it's going to be the face of a tiger, or I'm sorry, not a tiger, a lion. It's gonna be the face of a lion and it's gonna have a rose coming out of its mouth as it's roaring. So let's take a look at what we can do to finish up these pieces today. I want you guys to be able to watch me paint and learn how to do the things that I do. So oil paint is a little bit different than the paints we use in class. It comes in tubes like this and it's very messy. Now you boys and girls know when we use watercolors, and here I'll grab one, When we use watercolors, which are these kinds of paint, we know that they dissolve in water. So if we put a little bit of water in here, and we mix up water on our brush, just like this, the paint will mix up with the water and then we'll get the paint on our brush. So let's see what happens if we try and mix a green with water. Here's a green. I'm going to put just a little drop of water on my plate to try and mix it up. Well, I've got paint on my brush, but the water's not taking it off. They're not mixing together. So when you're painting with oil paint, you need something else to clean your brush. And that's where this comes in. These are called mineral spirits. They're clear just like water, but they can dissolve oil, which water can't. So what I'll do is I'll take my mineral spirits, and I've got a little cup here, just like we use in class, and I'll pour some of those mineral spirits in there. And this is just like your water when you're cleaning watercolor brushes. You can see the oil paint dissolves right off. Good as new. Also, when you're painting with oil paints, there's a lot of different ways you can blend them together and get very different kinds of lines. So I use a lot of different brush sizes when I paint with oil colors. Now, if you look at some of Mr. D's largest brushes, these are more for getting a lot done at once. If I'm gonna paint a big background all over a canvas, I would use a brush like this. But if I was doing fine details, and let's say I wanted to add some hair to a painting, I would use a very fine brush, just like this one with a very fine. There are other brushes that are good for all kinds of different things. This kind of brush is called a filbert. It has a round head and it's good for blending colors together. So what else do we need to paint with oil paints? Well, you might have seen me using this plate over here. And I'm going to dry all the water off of it because I don't want that water on there. It's just going to get in my way. So what I have here with my paper plate is I have a palette. A palette is just a surface where you mix your colors together. It can be anything from a piece of cardboard to a special kind of palette that you buy at a store. You know, the kind of palette that's almost circular in shape and it has a hole for you to put your thumb through. And if you're going to have a palette, you have to have a palette knife, which is used for you to mix your colors without having to get your paint brushes dirty. Very important for oil paints. 
So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put all of my colors on the palette so I'll have them all ready to go and to blend up as I need them. And I'm only gonna need a little bit of each one because oil paints go really, really far using just a little bit. So there's red. Right, these are all the colors that come with my oil paints. You might have noticed I don't have a purple. Well, I can always make a purple. What I can do is I can take a little bit of red and a little bit of ultramarine blue. So I'll put my red down and there's some ultramarine blue. A little more. And I'll blend it together and I will end up with purple. It's a very dark purple, but you could add some white to it to make it lighter. Here, I'll do that. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. All the colors of the rainbow, Reggie Biv. Now, I'm going to take a look at my painting and figure out what kind of color I need to mix in order to keep painting. I'll start with this lion painting. Now, if you look closely, you can see Mr. D way in advance. I took a pencil and I sketched out the whole lion so I can tell where his eyebrows are supposed to be. I can tell where his whiskers are supposed to be and the rest of his mane. So if you look, his mane is kind of this dark reddish color, but it's also kind of brown. So to do that, I think I'm gonna mix up some red and some brown. And I'll start painting. Now looking at it on the canvas, it looks a little too red. So I'll grab just a tiny bit more brown and I'll mix some more brown in. I'll fix up my edges a little bit. I'm gonna spend some time just painting this main part of the lion, so I might speed up the video here. All right, and I think I've painted about as much of the mane as I can. I'm gonna add a couple more little highlight little pieces in here just to kind of give his mane some character that it didn't have. I'm just kind of brighten things up a little bit. His mane was very dark and very brown and it's not all uniform like that. There's some variation or things that are done just a little differently. He's a complex lion. He has complex character. What can I say? I'm running out of brown, so I'm going to add a little bit more. But you can see how much I was able to paint with just the little bit of brown that I had. One thing about oil paints is that they're very expensive, so you don't want to use more of them than you need to. So here it is, my burnt sienna. And I think I'm gonna use a lot of the yellow ochre too, because I use that for his main fur color. So I'll use a little more of that. Oh, I don't want it to come back on my finger. Whenever you're working with oil paints, it's very handy to have a big roll of paper towels nearby. You will need them. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush because I'm gonna move on to a new color. Just like I did before, I'm gonna dip it in that mineral spirits. I stuttered when I said mineral spirits because I'm used to saying turpentine. And turpentine is just another word, but it's all the same stuff. That one's uh, starting to look pretty dark, but it's still doing the job. I got all the paint off there pretty well. Now I want to do a little bit more work on his fur. So what I'm going to do is load up... You know what, I'm going to use the same brush because that one was working very well. Actually, maybe even a little smaller. Let's use... This brush right here, very, very fine. I want to have a lot of control over where I'm putting the paint for this next part. Let's mix a little bit of color to make this lighter fur color for the lion. So I think I made this by mixing some white and some uh, yellow ochre and maybe just a touch of brown. So I'm going to get all of those on my knife and I'll make a new spot for it and I'll blend all these colors together. Now I'll get the lighter color on my brush and I'll start painting. I want to kind of fix up his chin on this side because it looks like there's a lot more fur on this side than this side. And the nice thing about oil paints is they will continue to blend for a long time once you lay them down. So I'm able to blend this lighter fur color right into his mane, no problems at all. I'm just going back and forth with my brush. You can just blend and blend and blend with oil colors. They're very messy and they're a little difficult to get used to, but once you do, they're hard to come back from. Now, I made a little mistake down here, so I'm just going to scratch it up. The cool thing about oil paints is they never really fully dry, so no matter how bad of a mistake you make, you can always scratch it up and start over. Mr. D's making some mistakes. That's okay. We can always clean them up. It happens a lot when you paint. All right, now I'm gonna focus on his eyes for a little while, and I'm definitely gonna need a very small brush for this. So I'm gonna clean one off and have it ready. I think eyes and whiskers are all that's left for today. He's not quite done. I've got some more detail work to do, but he's getting close. So I'm just gonna do his eyes and his whiskers and I'll leave him alone for a little while.
and I'm gonna say I'm probably done working on him for today. He's got some work to go, but he's doing all right. 